We welcome everyone to the 2023 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference brought to you in partnership with Animal Evac New Zealand and our platinum sponsor, Four Paws International. Our next session is going to be an animal field triage protocol for livestock and horses caught in disasters with Anna Dubink and Gerard Mulder. It's a privilege to have you present today. All bios and abstracts are available to read from our website under speakers. Before we start, some basic housekeeping. The Zoom chat feature has been disabled, so anyone that has questions, please use the Q&A feature. We will endeavor to answer those at the end. This year, we have enabled multilingual closed captions, so if you would like to hear the presentation in another language, click on the closed caption icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We encourage you to use hashtag G-A-D-M-C-O-N-F for Twitter and other social media. A short evaluation will be made available when you exit the session, and we really in need that information. And just a reminder, the video recording will not be available until it has been edited and will be released later this year. So without further delay, it is my pleasure to welcome Anne and Gerard to GADMC. Uh, thank you for your uh, for your kind introductions. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, animal triage training game today. Um, but first, uh, how this was established. Um, during my master research, uh, I until recently, I was a student uh, veterinary medicine at the Utrecht University. Um, uh, and I did my master research on an animal triage field, a field triage protocol, because I was actually amazed that it wasn't there yet so um we we figured out the problem that there was nothing or i could not find anything um so uh, our question was is it possible to develop a veterinary field triage system for livestock including horses and wildlife in mass casualty situations uh, based on a human triage system so we uh, we did a three-phase study. Uh, we started with a literature review uh, on PubMed and Scopus um, to see what uh, human triage, field triage, uh, are we talking about, uh, protocols were available, um, and to see what model was suitable uh, for uh, the purpose that we wanted to, uh, to have. Um, and the outcome was that we chose one human primary triage system, primary or field triage system um, selected as model. Then we uh, consulted uh, uh, different experts uh, in the field with uh, veterinary triage and uh, human triage. Um, and uh, we uh, looked at the protocol to see how it had to be adjusted for animals. Um, and we had a concept protocol as outcome of this phase. And then the last phase of the study was a two round Delphi study with a panel of, uh, uh, yeah, initially 25 experts uh, of which 20 completed the first round and 80 completed the second round with approximately 20 questions um, to rate different points of the uh, concept uh, triage protocol on a five point Likert scale. Um, and uh, we wanted to reach 80% uh, or more consensus. Um, and uh, this led to a protocol that was ready for field testing. So a little bit uh, into the, the study, um, how did we choose a model? Uh, our selection criteria were uh, first used on adults, Two, we wanted to be widely used, so it was easy to adapt for different first responders because they are already quite familiar with the protocol. Uh, we looked at the approach and we also looked at accuracy percentages. Uh, this was a bit difficult because there were very few studies that compared the, the different, uh, uh, different triage protocols um, in the same way because they all had a different method or they did not uh, really compare them. Um, so it was a bit of a hard time, but there was one study of McKee et al. 2020 that um, uh, reviewed the accuracy percentages of the three uh, main protocols that we were interested in. And we also had a little bit of a difficulty with over triaging and under triaging. 
which we had to look into. But eventually uh, we chose the, the salt um, mass casualty triage uh, because it's, uh, it's quite recent developed and it's widely used. Um, and because of its approach, it had compared to the other uh, models, relatively high accuracy percentages. And we were very interested in the global sorting step, which you see in the picture as step one, global sorting, that there was an initial sorting of people uh, based on their ability to uh, to react to uh, certain uh, commands. Um, and when you have uh, large numbers of animals, uh, that was a very interesting step for us. So we took the steps here uh, of the SALT triage protocol. The white uh, lettering is what the uh, initial human protocol already had. And the orange um, lettering is what we added because we thought it was important. And the red is what we uh, skipped because we thought it wasn't, um, it, yeah, it wasn't uh, feasible in animals. So because we're working with animals, we thought we believed that safety was very important. So we added a step. Um, and then we go to step one, a global sorting, um, which was very useful when you have large quantities of casualties. Um, then you go to step two, which is individual assessment. Um, and the SALT protocol um, assessed peripheral poles and likely to survive given current resources. Uh, peripheral poles was not feasible because we cannot um, come so close to those animals. So we thought it was not feasible. So we we uh, skipped it from the protocol. And also we wanted this protocol to be um, performed by uh, minimally trained first responders. So likely to survive given current resources might be a little bit difficult to assess for, for um, people that are, have, didn't have extensive training. Also the SALT protocol has uh, four categories, initial uh, triage categories, and we thought it might be a little bit easier uh, to skip one, and we had three categories. And then you have uh, step three, which is the life-saving interventions. And in our protocol, uh, this should be done under supervision of a veterinarian or by a veterinarian. So there it is able to uh, to assess if animals are likely to survive given current resources because you have the expertise of a vet nearby. Um, then we did our Delphi study because the next slide was our concept protocol, the, the uh, protocol that we first established with the help of their expert consultation. Um, and then we did a Delphi study. Uh, and in round one, we uh, had 19 questions that were answered by 20 experts. And nine of the 19 reached those uh, that 80% um, consensus. Uh, we made several uh, adjustments based on comments that were made from our expert panel. So they said an additional category might be useful. So we added the, the uh, category that we initially uh, skipped. Uh, we added the prioritization. Um, we refined some descriptions. We objectified some descriptions. Um, so we got from this first initial protocol to the one you see on the right. Um, in blue, you see what parts did reach consensus in the first round and what parts we, uh, we adjusted based on several comments. Um, then we had the first round, um, 10 of the 18 questions uh, reached consensus and this uh, round was, filled, it was uh, completed by 18 experts. Um, we again, made some adjustment based on comments that were placed. We refined some descriptions to make it more, more clear and more object for everyone. So here you see the final uh, protocol, uh, which uh, in uh, light blue is what reached consensus in the first round. And in darker blue, uh, that reached what reached consensus in the second round. And in the table, you see the, um, the, um, questions that did not reach consensus in the first round, but did reach consensus in the second round. Um, so in conclusion, um, the study uh, 
concluded that the protocol is executable on livestock and horses. The expert agreed all on this fact, of, on this statement. Um, and they also said that the protocol has added value in mass casualty incidents. Um, so we can conclude that a human triage protocol can be a model for veterinary triage protocol and that nearly all physiological variables that we uh, use to assess animals uh, in our protocol reached consensus. So what are our recommendations for the future? Um, the protocol and the expert did not reach consensus on the uh, executability of the protocol for wildlife because it was just a little bit more complicated. So in the future, we would like to further develop this protocol for wildlife. Um, we have established a, a uh, um, concept field a triage protocol and we would love to test it uh, through disaster simulation um, and also briefing and training for professionals or first responders is very important to um, to uh, to be able to perform triage when a disaster or mass casualty incidents happens so we established the uh, aid foundation the animal disaster education which has just that oh, just that goal um, to train and educate first responders. Uh, it is founded uh, just over a year ago, um, and we want to provide specific knowledge and skills to help animals. Uh, I am one of the three founders with my two partners, uh, Joris Weinker and Derek uh, van Donge, and we developed a serious game as our first project, which is our next slide, the animal triage training game. Um, and uh, Gerard is going to tell a little bit more about uh, serious games and how to learn by playing games. Gerard? Mute myself. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Great. Somehow the slides double up sometimes. Can you see that or is it all clear for you? Because sometimes they're, they're over, they overlap each other. And then you do something and then you see one slide again. But never mind. Let, let, let's see. So... Uh, how to learn by playing games. I'll introduce myself. I'm Gerard. I'm a biologist by training, not a veterinarian. And uh, we've been working together with Anna and Joris to, uh, to make this game. And uh, one of the things we think games can do is they can um, re sort of, in your head at least, realistically bring you into a new situation where you can actually learn things. And hopefully you can bring those things with you into reality. And our uh, understanding is that first responders uh, are not always used to having animals involved in a, and the veterinarian might be, but uh, a policeman or a fireman might not be uh, used to having animals in their disaster situation. And uh, the ambition to do something when animals do get hurt or are present at the scene is uh, the ambition is very high, but the knowledge level is very low. So what we want is uh, for people to make be able to make a, a, a worthwhile contribution um, by playing a game. So let's go to the next slide. Yeah. Okay. Now they don't overlap. So when are serious games appropriate? That's a good question. Um, uh, and they're appropriate, like I said, when you're training for a situation that's not easily, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, simulated, then a game might be very appropriate. And uh, a serious game is a way of learning by engaging in playful behavior. So some people might think that the situation shouldn't be too serious, but on the other hand, why not? Uh, I mean, everybody understands it's not real, but uh, because games can sort of take you to that situation, you can still feel some of the actual pressures. And everybody knows about serious games uh, and, and, and gamification, uh, because in your head you play a lot of games. Say you have any experience at the gym, or maybe you're doing the dishes together with your, with your uh, sibling or with your partner, and there's always a little game going on. You try to be faster than them, you try to sort of outdo them and, and all this competition is, is playful, it's gamish and, and people think that way, they like to, to act that way. Uh, and the, but the player comes first in a serious game. So what does the player get out of the interaction? You're not trying to uh, put something in their head, it's not propaganda, it's you actually give them an opportunity to learn. And so what's interesting, important is what drives the player to resist learning? In this case, for example, with animal triage, it's not some kind of um, 
how do you call it, um, aversion to, to learning the thing, but it's just the inability to experience a complex situation like that in your head if you've never been around it. So that prevents you from learning uh, before you get into the situation. Uh, and it's a game of vessel of knowledge. Well, yes and no, uh, because, you know, it's like a book. There can be text in the game, spoken language, and uh, the game can tell you stuff uh, like a serious game would. Uh, but there's also uh, an opportunity to experience something. So that makes it a little bit more interactive than a regular uh, source of information or like a presentation. Uh, can a game motivate learning behavior? We think yes, because you can compare your results to results of other people. You compare your results to your previous results. You can compare your results to a benchmark like a timer. And, um, and what's always uh, thought of in a game is the magic circle. A game is a safe environment to practice. If you fail, you don't fail, you don't fail the animal you're trying to save because you can replay the level and do it again. And uh, so a game is a safe learning environment. You can make mistakes without having them having any consequences. I think uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, I, I want to skip this because this is our theory on, on games. If you want to get back to it later, I think we can do it, but I think we should go to the actual game. So if you can skip through it, well, this is a way I can say it quickly. We look at people learning uh, and a lot has to do with the level of knowledge you're confident with. So the more confident you are, the more you're toward the right. And uh, this is more basic game theory. So let's let's skip that too. And let's go to the actual game. Um, but maybe this is one to, to look at for a little bit. What a game is, is basically a way to hold your attention. And that's what we're trying to, we will try to show you in the next, uh, in, in, in the presentation of the game. Let's go there. These are different learning styles. And um, we can get to that while we're going through the game. Um, so maybe we can switch to the different, to, to the game screen. So this is our, uh, our game hub. Um, Gerard, you can see it, right? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, so. okay. So this is the, 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 the main page. Uh, you can also uh, look at the protocol we just talked about um, and learn the different steps and to see what they consist of. Um, so what we're always trying to do in a game is not to uh, press everybody that plays to see all the information, but it has to be only one button away. So if you want to learn more about the protocol, some players will, will want to do that. You'll have to be able to see it. And, uh, and, and whether, while if you press everybody to go through the protocol before they can play, a lot of people will just stop playing because they're not that interested. And this is the first screen. So you can uh, basically access three levels from here and you can see your previous uh, results uh, on, on this screen too. So for example, the right one, you didn't score many points yet. So that'll be a good motivation to vis revisit the, the game, play it again. So we can start the first, uh, the first mission or the first uh, scenario. Yeah. If, if somebody plays the game, they'll first have to finish the first level to unlock the second level. Of course, the game gives you the information at the moment when you're when you need it. Uh, so, for example, uh, this gives you an overview of the different kind of actions you can do. And it gives you a little bit of background on the type of disaster that's been going on. In this case, it's a barn fire. And we go to the scenario. So we're in the safe area. And uh, the sheep that were rescued from the barn are already there for you to sort. And so you're the fireman. And uh, uh, the vet is on the way. And before they're here, you really want to give them your first assessment, the first sorting. What is it? The global sorting is basically what you call it, right? Or no? Yeah, yeah. The global sorting is done for you. The the game trains you in the individual assessment. So uh, you uh, basically only perform step two of the protocol um, until the vet comes. So we have our little uh, introduction screen here that tells you... Uh, uh, how to play the game and what kind of buttons you have. So you can click on the animal, 
um, and what kind of actions you can perform uh, to, uh, to assess the animal. Um, you have some information here. And you can also see a very summarized uh, version of the protocol. So you always have that little uh, reminder of uh, what every category is. And this is the time you have to perform your triage because that's when the vet arrive uh, and you can uh, brief your findings to the, to the veterinarian. Yeah. So and the so timer is going right now. And so as uh, first responders are not expected to treat the animals in any way. So they're not supposed no. to stop the bleeding or cover the wounds or whatever, or inspect them uh, uh, invasively. That's uh, not the meaning. So the three ways to assess uh, one of the animals, uh, if you can click on one, are basically to, uh, you can expect inspect them a little closer. You can listen to their breathing, for example, or the noises they make. And, and in some cases, you can uh, touch and feel uh, them. Inspecting is always visual. So if you want to see more about what's going on, you see that there are two points of interest on the animal. <clears throat> so something's going on around the head and something's going on with the hind leg. And so if you click on it, you get a little bit of information. So you learn a little bit about the breathing and uh, you can see a little bit about uh, the, the, the particular injuries that they may have. And if you click on the back one, you get a little bit more information uh, and you hear that they're, um, there's something wrong with their breathing. So maybe you want to listen. I want to listen more and, and find out more about what's going on. And what we learn from listening is that the animal is gasping for air. So they're breathing heavily and uh, hoarsely, maybe. Uh, so that's something we found out about the animal. And at any moment in time, we can pick one of the triage colors, the red, black, yellow, or green, uh, and assign them to the animal. So for example, if we think this is urgent because the animal is breathing heavily, heavily and they have several wounds, we can mark them red. And then we can zoom out again and go to the other, <coughs> to the other animals. And while the time is running, the vet is on their way and they have 13 minutes. Uh, we have 13 minutes. You can go to the next animal, find out more about them. So maybe we start by looking first. And now we see two points of interest again. And uh, if we look closely, we don't actually see them breathing at all. So maybe we want to find out a little more. Maybe we listen. And actually, we don't hear anything either. So now we get to the point where maybe we want to start prodding the animal a little bit and see if they have any response at all. Maybe they're already dead. And there are a couple of different options. We can either make a loud noise by clapping our hands uh, and it doesn't react to that at all. And then we can uh, prod them a little bit and see if we touch, if they move, we touch them or we pinch them slightly, but they don't react. And then the third one is we can poke them in the eye. It doesn't sound very nice, but it's definitely if they have any reflex, or if they don't have any reflex when you poke them in the eye, uh, we're probably gonna assign them the black uh, color because they don't don't look like they'll be helped much if the vet gives them it, their attention first and then we go zoom out again go to the next image can we do anything about uh, the tiny lamb my favorite <coughs> doesn't look like it because they, they they're standing there they're looking lively but don't look wounded so maybe we can give them the green right away Okay, and then maybe the mother or the father looking from the horns or could be a female sheep with horns. Uh, and the animal's breathing normally and they don't have any severe wounds. And if we listen closely, we don't find out anything new really. So there's no reason to poke them in the eye. They're, they're looking fine. We'll give them the green. Okay, uh, and go to next. And uh, this one is looking a little bit funny. 
So what are they doing? Gerard, Gerard uh, yep. I'm going to tell you we got about two minutes. So yeah, okay. If there's so any let's questions. Stop. I think we should go to questions because I think you get it, right? This is how you do it, and in the end, you get a feedback on all the uh, all the decisions you made, and you get pointers towards making better decisions in the future. It's brilliant. We appreciate it. Yeah, because um, of... yeah, we go have ahead, Anne. Some last, yeah, we have some last announcements because the game is live now. Um, it's uh, it's available, and you can buy it, so it's it's there. Uh, it's not uh, only uh, uh, a nice image we can show you, um, but um, it's uh, it's live. It's available. Um, you can go to uh, eightfoundation.com and you can uh, you can find the game. There are three missions at the moment. There are more to come. Uh, it's training animal triage, uh, field triage, to give you the skill and the confidence to do it uh, in the uh, in the field. Um, and we already have uh, Utrecht University um, making this part of their master's curriculum. So um, we hope uh, a lot of uh, organizations are there to come. So uh, that was our, uh, our presentation. Fantastic. I greatly appreciate this. Is there any, uh, one question would be, is there any plan to do companion animals? Um, not in the moment, uh, because we are <coughs> really creating more missions and more scenarios um, um, because the protocol is validated for, for, um, uh, for livestock and horses. Um, but uh, maybe in the future, uh, we want to, uh, to uh, um, develop further for companion animals. And maybe we should test that, but maybe this protocol is already a little bit suitable for companion animals as well. Absolutely, there's uh, many organizations we, we think that might be able to use that. Okay, well, fantastic. We appreciate your presentation.